Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. Sunday night football is just a few days away. Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Taylor Swift, Chris nice. Jones, the <laughs> Super Bowl champions, two time. And I know there's a lot of Falcons out fans out there that may not be, you know, locked into every other NFL game and they're like, oh, we're playing the two time defending champions. We got no chance. This line is set at three and a half for a reason, guys. And it's because the Chiefs, while they seem to invent a new way to win, whether it's a Bengals defender uh, making a boneheaded play on fourth and 16, or whether it's Isaiah Likely's uh, foot being one inch out of bounds with t- for the game tying touchdown, they always find a way to win. They have become elite, elite, the best team that we've seen in quite some time at finding ways to win games they probably shouldn't, just like the Falcons did on Monday night. But they do not come in here and just railroad teams, and they got problems of their own. Pacheco's out. Their, their offense looked very, very, very mediocre. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is coming off the worst game of his career against the Bengals, and he struggles against the Bengals often, but still, you know, their questions, the weapons, Xavier Worthy had a great week one, was kind of absent week two. This will obviously be a test, but it should be a, a very, very close game on, on Sunday Night Football. Yeah, I mean, the Chiefs are two-time defending Super Bowl champions, but this isn't the 2007 Patriots. You know, this isn't the beat everybody by two touchdowns kind of team. Um, You know, maybe earlier in Patrick Mahomes' career, I think you could make that argument before they had to pay everybody. When Tyree Kill was there, Travis uh, Kelsey was making pennies. Patrick Mahomes was making pennies. They could pay all these guys uh, because they weren't paying, you know, their stars. Uh, But, you know, they still have guys, obviously. They're, you know, you don't win back-to-back Super Bowls without being guys. But, you know, this is a different Falcons team. This is not the Falcons team that I think, you know, week one people remember or even the first three, most of three quarters Falcons team from Monday Night Football. This is a different Falcons team that is one, still learning how to play with one another, still learn, the coordinators are still learning their personnel. And I think, you know, uh, this Chiefs defense is, is more scary, in my opinion, than the Chiefs offense. Like, I, I did something, Chase, on the site, go check it out, sportstalkatl.com. That, yeah, you know, everyone's scared of Patrick Mahomes, like, and rightfully so. You know, you give the guy a minute and 30 seconds to win a football game, you've probably lost already without even trotting your defense out on the field. With that being said, this Chiefs defense is the reason why, first of all, they even made the playoffs last year uh, and, and won some improbable games last year in the playoffs. This defense, Steve Spagnola and Chris Jones, should terrify Falcons fans more so than Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey. As we saw, like literally one person can wreck a game on this Falcons offense. T.J. Watt, week one. I mean, Zach Robinson called an absolutely horrific game turns around and calls a masterful game in week two against the Eagles for the most part. Uh, You know, he's going to have to have a plan more so for Chris Jones. And I think, you know, the the Falcons should really be worried about Patrick Mahomes beating him. This offensive line the Chiefs have, it's not that great. Trey Hendrickson, we don't have a Trey Hendrickson. And I know Falcons fans want to, you know, praise Matthew Judon, uh, two sacks, two games, that pace, all pro. But with that being said, if, if you're watching the sacks and the pressures that the Falcons are getting, they're all schemed up. They're twists, they're stunts, they're, they're simulated pressure and things like that. They're not four down, four hands in the dirt, beating your guy one-on-one. That's not going to happen. But that doesn't mean we can't pressure Patrick Mahomes in this offensive line that isn't as good as everybody thinks it is. Yeah, I mean, especially since I think a lot of people, and, I, and I, that's something that I mentioned, was the defensive line and the lack of pressure they were able to get against the Eagles. But th- th- like we said, the Eagles offensive line is probably the best in the NFL. This is going to be an opportunity for this pass rush, especially against a Patrick Mahomes who's notorious for trying to play make and make things. And, and Raheem Morris talked about it when you're defending Patrick Mahomes. It's all about defending those you know second acts that he has, right? Yeah. Like the initial play is not there. It breaks down. He gets out of the pocket. Like you can't lose track, especially no. when you have guys like Xavier Worthy out there that have track speed, the fastest guy that ever ran a 40. But I, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I mean, I think it comes down to this Falcons de- uh, offense scoring against this Chiefs defense, having a better plan for Chris Jones than they did against TJ Watt. Because yes, he's capable of breaking. And I think it's going to be a lot of Caleb McGarry on him and a lot of Matthew Bergeron. Like if that, if I was the Chiefs, right, this is a guy that can rush from the inside and the outside. Well, he'll versatile. line up everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, but that's what I'm saying. Like if he's going to line up inside, I imagine he's going to be a lot on Matthew Bergeron. If he's going to line up outside. It's going to be a lot on Caleb McGarry. Those two guys have to be better than they were against TJ Watt. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. I I think more than anything, I I think you saw the formula for success 
uh, against a bad Eagles defense. It, there's no question about it. But that Eagles defense, like I said on Tuesday, I think, they didn't stack the box a lot. They played a lot of too high, and I know a lot of people are talking about this too high stuff going on right now, but that that is the truth. I'm not just pulling that out of my butt. Uh, the Falcons faced very minimal loaded boxes, you know, seven, eight guys in a loaded box, which is different than they did against the Steelers. The Steelers were, you know, daring the Falcons to throw the football. That wasn't the case against the Eagles, and you saw it. I mean, B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier were averaging over five yards a carry. I think Tyler Tyler Algier was like 6.9 and B. John Robinson was like 5.9 or something like that. I think that's the obvious path to success for this Falcons offense. You know, get the defense off balance, get Chris Jones from, you know, from pinning his ears back and that kind of thing. I think it's quite obvious. You got to establish the run. And this Falcons offensive line is much better in pass pro when they're rushing the ball successfully. They're not as good, in my opinion, in pass sets. That's not a hot take uh, as they are in run blocking. So, you know, the formula to success uh, for the Falcons is quite obvious. And if, and on that, in that same breath, the Chiefs know it. The Chiefs know. It. Yeah, I mean, listen, pound the rock, long drives, tire Chris Jones out, make sure he's not at 100% and his ear keep back at the, end, off the and field. keep Pat off the field. I mean, it's pretty And your defense fresh. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. The other thing of note here that is interesting, right, is that Justin Simmons, right, who has the most interceptions off Patrick Mahomes in the in the entire league. It's Justin Simmons. Nobody knows Patrick Mahomes more than Justin Simmons right. from a secondary perspective. So you wonder how that kind of insight, that kind of expertise, that kind of experience plays in this sort of matchup you got to think it gives them a little bit of a bigger advantage on the defensive side of the ball than than it would have without him yeah I think you know Jesse Bates and, and Justin Simmons Justin Simmons hasn't had the uh kind of notable impact in terms of a TV fan perspective where we saw Jesse Bates game ceiling interception the pass breakup on the goal line of a would-be touchdown against the Eagles but he is still effective. He's been very good just quietly. And Jesse Bates has been better than anybody at his position through two weeks. And I think, you know, that that's a great, you know, matchup. You're talking about uh, an Ed Reed type of safety versus a Tom Brady. Ed Reed and Tom Brady battles were, were epic. And I think you're going to see something similar this week where it's going to be a chess match where Patrick Mahomes is going to try and, you know, fool the defense with his eyes. And, and the defense in that same breath is going to is going to try and fool Patrick Mahomes into, you know, different coverages. We're supposed to be here, but we're actually here. That is going to be the turning point in my eyes. And obviously the Falcons have to be better uh, against the run. They were atrocious uh, in week two. And, and, you know, they weren't, they didn't really stop the Steelers uh, rushing attack in week one either. But, you know, I, I'm excited to see Jesse Bates and Justin Simmons versus Patrick Mahomes. Well, yeah, I mean, and Bates is also a guy that has a lot of experience, a lot of yep. big game experience. Both of those guys to, have beaten back, or not yeah. gotten the better well, of Patrick beaten, Mahomes. Yeah. Well, not Justin Simmons so yeah, yeah. much. Yeah, well, dude, the, I mean, you know, I mentioned it. Like, listen, they've only won two games right on the road, the Kansas City Chiefs dating back to 2023 by more than 10 points. You know who they've lost to? The Denver Broncos. Because they lost 24 to 9 to the crappy Denver Broncos. So, yeah, I mean, Justin Simmons has gotten the best of him. Jesse Bates, I mean, you want to talk about a matchup to watch? It's those two guys. And, and, and Patrick Mahomes. Matthew well, Judon was there for the, at the big one before, you know, Tom Brady left the Pats. And, so and Matthew and, and Patrick Mahomes will throw you a ball to intercept, right? Yeah. Like he did it multiple times against the Bengals, was intercepted twice. Like he is not afraid. I mean, he, he is superhuman. And sometimes when you're superhuman, you think you can do everything but when you have two ball hawking safeties it's interesting if he's going to be willing to take those shots and if he is willing to take those shots the falcons have to take advantage yeah another matchup i think is important um is the interior uh, of this falcons offensive line uh against chris jones and and you mentioned he he is going to line up all over uh, the 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 defensive front but mainly uh in, in first and second downs he's going to be Right outside of the guard, all the way to outside of the guard, whether it's inside the guard, head up the guard, inside the center, whatever it's going to be, he's probably going to be in the interior for the most part. This is an excellent, excellent opportunity for Drew Dahlman and Matthew Bergeron to kind of put their names out there as, you know, we. it's not just Chris Lindstrom right here. This is a perfect opportunity and Chris Lindstrom's going to have to be as good as he was against Jalen Carter, who make no bones about it. Jalen Carter, you know, that Eagles defensive front is, 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 a, is a lot of, you know, uh, uh, fake noise, fake, you know, they're not that good. 
Jalen Carter is that good. Jalen Carter is one of the better interior defenders in this league. Chris Lynchum, for the most part, stonewalled him. Chris Jones is a different beast. Chris Jones is the best interior defender and is probably not particularly close. He is going to wreak havoc if Drew Dahlman, Matthew Bergeron, and Chris Lindstrom are not uh, you know, up for this task. But more than that, the linebackers on Travis Kelsey, it, it, it might drive me nuts. Troy Anderson had some good plays, some bad plays against the Eagles. If I'm Andy Reid and I watch that Falcons film against the Eagles, I'm looking at Troy Anderson and just picking on him all day long with Travis Kelsey. Yeah, the other one is Mike Hughes, right? Mike Hughes, he's, actually, been, he's actually been really good. Now, the, I take everything back thus far that I said about Mike like, Hughes. Now, the Steelers and the Eagles don't necessarily have the passing attacks, especially with the Eagles being down A.J. Brown, but I think this is the week that we really find out about Mike Hughes. Like He, he has been... But according to PFF, the 14th best corner. He's been good against the run. He's only allowed three. He's, been, he's only allowed three receiving yards. Three receiving yards this season. Now we'll we'll, we'll have a real test. And if I'm Andy Reid, obviously that's going to be another guy that I'm thinking about picking on. But if he can stop that early, that'll obviously be a huge start. I think the more and more I look into this game, talk about the game, I feel a little more confident. Now this has always been where like. The Falcons let you down. You start to get your hope up, and then they crush well, you by again, making you look different like different Falcons. That's team. what I'm saying. So this is where I look at Raheem Morris and I look at the and Kirk Cousins. I say, can't are we different? Right? Yep. Like this is the game where yep. they let you down. This is actually a matchup. It's the Chiefs' first road game. Um, they struggled on the road last year. They don't have Isaiah Pacheco, so you think you can probably at least limit their run game, and they don't necessarily have the weapons that they've had in the past. And so I think. You know, the Falcons not only should be able to keep this close, they really should have a good chance of winning it. I think, you know, personnel-wise, these teams are, you know, m you know, maybe we'll give the – because of the quarterback position, it, it matters so much. You, you have yeah. to give them the edge. I think more than anything, what this game is going to come down to is Andy Reid versus Jimmy Lake and Zach Robinson versus Steve Spagnola. They obviously, have obviously the have the advantage. Have the advantage. What are you going to do, young coordinator? Zach Robinson took a massive step in week two against the Eagles. Jimmy Lake, I think, maybe took a step back. But again, Eagles D offense way better than the Steelers offense. This is a huge test. This is their two biggest tests thus far, and it's not even close. Andy Reid, obviously, everybody knows who he is. But Steve Spagnola is like the guy that nobody talks about being – uh, the key cog in this Chiefs yeah. dynasty. The fact that Steve Spagnuolo doesn't have a head coaching job. Well, he doesn't want one. He doesn't want one. This is people no, say no. that. He says this. People he say says this. people say that. He, the right job he comes says around. This. The right job comes around. He's going to take it. No, he says I, this. Listen, I'm telling you, he's going to be a head coach again. Nah. Like, yes, he will. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, will be a head coach again. But Maybe. that's a different story yeah. for another 